Hey, I'm JR. If you want movies at home to sound as good as movies at the movie theater, you need a home theater. That's what I have here. This is a 5.1.2 home theater system. That means we have two front speakers, two rear speakers, two upwards firing height or Atmos speakers, a powered subwoofer, and a center channel. All of that's powered by this home theater receiver here and connected with all of those speaker wires. Once you have a system like this installed, you will get full immersive surround sound. This system will run you about $1,500 and will take some JR, setup. I'm gonna interrupt you because I've got something I wanna show you. What's that, Rondell? We've got the Sennheiser MBO Plus. It is a singular sound bar that's offering a 7.1.4 immersive experience. You're saying that one bar has more speakers than I've got right here? I'm saying that this single piece is gonna fill up your room and give you that same home theater immersive experience as a traditional setup. And probably more expensive than my home theater system too. This piece is $1,500, same as what you've got. What if we took these two systems, set them up in this room right here behind us and did some comparisons with some scenes from some movies and really saw how your sound bar stacks up to my home theater? I like where your head's at, let's, let's do it. Let's do it. So we're gonna watch three different scenes on these two systems uh, to really get an idea of how well they do. Uh, scene number one is uh, the Battle of Yorktown scene from Hamilton on Disney+. Plus. Now, it is uploaded and mixed in Dolby Atmos, so we should be able to really take advantage of the fact that this scene has tons of action, guns, cannons, lights, dancing. It's amazing. I know what it's supposed to sound like, so I should be able to tell you which one of these systems is doing it right. You've listened to time or two? Uh, yeah, a few <laughs> times. Uh, so after that, we're actually going to check out a scene from Dark, a uh, Netflix thriller. Uh, and this is kind of the opposite of what you're, what you're talking about there. Very quiet, serene, no dialogue, but lots of different textures of rainfall and different materials. And I think that's really going to expose how well it can handle the Atmos. Cool, I'm not familiar with that show, so I can't wait. Is this a good show? Should I watch it? Spooky, about time travel, checks all my boxes. I'm in. Uh, and lastly, we're gonna watch the LA shootout scene from the movie Heat. That's right. Now, Heat was actually mixed in 5.1, so trying it out with the upmix capabilities, both from the Ankyo receiver and the soundbar, is really gonna show us uh, how we can put these things through their paces. Cool, ready to do this? Let's do it. Let's get it done. So we just watched those three scenes on both systems back to back. So Hamilton on the soundbar on the home theater, dark soundbar home theater, heat soundbar and home theater. So we got a pretty good idea of the difference. What'd you think? First and foremost, we have a cool job. We got to listen. To we got paid to do this. <laughs> Very lucky. Uh, what stands out to me, both incredible systems, both offer a lot of crisp, clear sound, dialogue, action, uh, the home theater setup with a subwoofer adds a lot more bottom end, and that matters. So I was impressed by the virtualization. I was impressed by the height. I thought the soundbar did a really good job with some of the rain effects and heat with the bullets and gunshots and the echoing downtown. I thought it was really compelling and wide, but it wasn't deep and it didn't have that bottom end. Yeah. What'd you think? I thought that the soundbar made Hamilton sound like it was in a theater, and it was. That's what it's supposed to sound like. Mm. Uh, I thought it made the atmosphere of dark really dark uh, with the rain, all of that, just fantastic. Uh, and of course, the canyons of LA with the bullets everywhere in that scene in heat, uh, pretty overwhelming on both systems. Everything that the sound bar did, I thought the home theater did a little bit better. And that's because there's so many more speakers and they're positioned all over the room. And there's a subwoofer. I do think the subwoofer added to the soundbar would have given it a leg up mm. uh, and made it a slightly more competitive. But when you think about the fact that both of these systems cost pretty much exactly the same amount of money, uh, one of them takes a longer time to set up and uh, is an obvious thing in your room compared to that soundbar. I mean, talk about how easy that was to hook up. Two cables plugged into the back, connected to the TV, and boom, you're in. Even with app control, there really is no question as to what's easier, what's more aesthetically pleasing, uh, what's gonna be less space consuming, yeah. you know, uh, an apartment or somebody with a partner who's maybe not as into sacrificing that space, the Ambio is a great solution. 
Yeah, so if you can go full-on home theater, I think you'll get the better surround experience. If you can't or don't want to for any reason, that Ambio, especially if you can add a sub, is a fantastic sound system. We had the, uh, the advantage of listening to one and then the other, so we could hear the difference. If all I did was bring the sound bar home, and just listen to that, I would be so happy with my home theater. Yeah, I think that's such a key point here, is we're not talking about the difference between bad and good at all. We're talking about two really impressive systems that have different benefits. Uh, I cannot stress enough how easy it is to just have a single soundbar with two cables, and all of a sudden we're back and we're enjoying this crazy immersive experience that we just got to have. And that's a very different experience from the setup of the speakers, getting the stands, going through the calibration on the receiver, night and day in terms of experience, with a pretty comparable result. And critical, by the way, to go through that room calibration on either of these systems. That's what makes them able to put objects in space, uh, audio-wise, right? It takes that to make that happen. So that's what we thought about the system. Uh, and like with so many things, it depends. It depends on your preferences, your room, everybody that's got to look at it and listen to it. And if you need any help picking that out, call us. Uh, we've got advisors standing by that can help you figure out the right home theater system for your room.